Swinging fire door assemblies protect openings and walls that are constructed to compartmentalize a building and resist the spread of fire. Without these fire doors as opening protectives, fire-rated walls, partitions, and barriers with door openings would be unable to deter the spread of smoke, flames, and toxic gases during a fire. The Steel Door Institute often receives questions about fire doors. This video will address a few of the misconceptions that come up the most. A common belief is that the rating of a fire door assembly is always equal to three quarters of the required rating of the wall. While most opening protectives are listed to withstand fire for a shorter period of time than the rating of the wall, there are also situations where the rating of the fire door assembly and the rating of the wall are the same. It is true that the rating of a fire door assembly is usually less than the rating of the wall because the fuel load adjacent to a swinging door would typically be less than the fuel load created by furniture and stored materials adjacent to a wall. However, the three-quarters rule does not apply to every location. A table in the International Building Code addresses requirements for opening protectives based on the type of firewall, barrier, or partition, and the ratings of those walls. For example, a three- or four-hour firewall should have fire door assemblies rated for three hours. Shaft enclosures must have 90-minute doors for a two-hour wall and 60-minute doors for a one-hour wall. Fire barriers and fire partitions that are rated for one hour or half hour may have 45-minute or 20-minute fire door assemblies, depending on where the walls are located within a building. The presumed intent of the IBC and NFPA 101 Life Safety Code is that all components of a fire door assembly must be listed for at least the required rating of the opening protective. The model codes do not prohibit the installation of components with a higher fire protection rating than what is required. The majority of fire-rated door assemblies are only required to carry a fire protection listing, but that is not always the case. For example, when a side light frame is installed in a two-hour exit enclosure wall, the IBC requires a two-hour fire resistance rated assembly. When specifying or supplying these assemblies, it is important to note whether a fire protection rating or a fire resistance rating is required. When a transom or side light frame has a rating of more than three-fourths of an hour, or when a fire barrier has a large expanse of glazing, the assemblies may need to be fire resistance rated. The majority of fire door assemblies are required by the IBC to be tested to UL10C or NFPA 252 using the positive pressure test method. These assemblies are fire protection rated and follow the requirements stated in the first section of this article. When assemblies are required to be fire resistance rated, they are tested in accordance with UL10C, UL10B, ASTM E119, or UL263. These test standards are used for assemblies such as walls, floors, ceilings, and structural components and are also used for fire resistance rated opening protectives. One of the basic differences between the tests for a fire protection rating, NFPA 252 or UL10C, and a fire resistance rating, ASTM E119 or UL263, is that the latter limits the temperature rise on the unexposed surface to 250 degrees for the full duration of the test. Fire resistance rated products must also withstand the hose stream test. Installing fire resistance rated glazing in a fire protection rated frame is not sufficient when a fire resistance rated assembly is required. The materials must be successfully tested as an assembly. On some projects, the architectural details call for fire door assemblies to have cladding, molding, or other decorative or protective materials covering labeled fire doors and frames. These materials are sometimes called plantons, defined by NFPA 80 as a decorative trim applied to the surface of a door. NFPA 80 requires the application of plantons and laminate overlays to be performed in accordance with the manufacturer's listings. Annex E of the standard includes detailed requirements for plantons and protective plates and further defines these two types of materials. Plantons may be made of wood, metal, plastic, or other materials and are typically decorative, such as molding that projects from the surface of the door. Protective plates are used for added resistance to wear or impact 
and are typically made of metal or plastic. NFPA 80 does not include prescriptive requirements for the allowable size, thickness, material, or means of attaching these materials to fire-rated doors or frames. These specifics are found in the manufacturer's individual listings and can vary depending on which listing laboratory is used. It is critical that the listing requirements are consulted to ensure that the specified cladding materials and methods are in accordance with the manufacturer's listings. Listing requirements often vary from one manufacturer to another and may be dependent on the combination of products specified. For modifications to existing hollow metal doors and frames, or for assistance with specifications for these products, it's best to contact the manufacturers so that the proposed application complies with the manufacturer's listings for fire door assemblies.